My name's Tyler, I am 18. My name's Madison Jordan, and I'm 18. Uh, I am Daniel Crow, and I'm 22 years old. Um, yes, I have. Um, I'm glad I was at least able to witness those conversations, um, but there, I wasn't able to witness very many. Um, my school didn't really talk about them a whole lot. There was an occasional discussion, but not frequently enough where I often felt really what you're describing. It's been very informative, just like kind of looking into the psyche of of it all, like our egos are very involved in a lot of things in life. Like, I mean, I'd have conversations with people and just with these conversations we're having, it's like being able to open ourselves up and really listen to the other person, listen to the person who has these experiences. Like, not feeling like you have to be, point out like all the things that you're being discriminated against to try and like up the other person. Absolutely. Um, I've always had a lot of friends who've had, you know, a lot of experiences from all over, the, all over the world and all over different types of things. And where I come from, like my high school was very political and was very much so talking about that. Um, and my friend group that I was a part of was very so much so outspoken. And um, I got a lot of that. I, I learned about a lot of that. And, um, you know, even, even in, in college, it's even more now because I have even more friends that are not from the country and they come from, you know, really, really cool places, say, like from India or Myanmar. And, you know, I'm just talking about, like, actually what's going on right now and that. And just, um, I've been in a lot of those conversations. I learned a lot. You know, I'm not really, I'm the one that could say that because I'm from, you know, I'm a suburban kid from, you know, the suburbs. But, you know, talking to these people and getting their side of it has really broadened my view of the world and how I see people and how I react with people. And um, I'm very appreciative of those conversations. Even though I can't talk a lot, I do learn a lot. Um, it's hard to say. I don't really remember, but generally when I'm confused about any given topic, I'll just ask about it. But there's this, I don't know if any of you guys recall, but there was this hashtag called All Lives Matter. And I actually used this hashtag once when I made, I posted this poem on TikTok and I used that hashtag. I mean, like I said, I started my work in activism a few years before, like two years before the pandemic and everything. And I actually used that saying because I became involved in animal rights work. And people around me, like in that kind of community, they would be like, when trying to defend and advocate for animals, they'd be like, oh, all lives matter. Like the animals aren't like less, like I'm not sure how to ex explain it, but it was something that brought up and it stuck in my mind. And I didn't realize when I was applying it to this that it just doesn't work. I wouldn't say I was confused. I, don't, I think a better way for me to was like, I didn't understand where they're coming from. Um, how a lot of people, so like where I'm from, like I don't have to worry about, you know, where my next meal is coming from, where's, you know, how am I gonna get somewhere, or how am I gonna do this? You know, it's always it's more, more or less guaranteed. Um, so when people talk about how you know, I had this one friend who, you know, talked about how, you know, some days you didn't know if he had food or not. So that's something I really couldn't, like, wrap my head around, like, experiencing something like that. Um, so it's more or less, like, I just couldn't relate in a possible way to them. So I was a little bit, I didn't really know what was going on, but I just, you know, I just talked about it with them, and then I, I tried to understand their situation and, and move from there. I cannot say that I have. I mean, I've been around campus and there's been events. And I mean, I have wanted to go into it, but I didn't like see any people that were like me. As in, oh my gosh, how do you define that? Oh my gosh, okay, too much philosophy. But like I would see like events happening and I would go into it and I'd feel like I'm, like I would w wasn't sure if I'm supposed to be in there. 
Like, it's just a weird thing. I feel weird for saying that, but, like, I mean, you asked that question. Like, I don't think, I mean, my answer to your question is no, but it's just, like, wow. Like, like I want to answer that question honestly. It's just taken me a little bit of, like, digging and not getting caught up in my head. Um, I wouldn't say, I would say yes, um, but it wasn't like I felt in a way threatened or anything. I felt like more or less ignored. Um, I can remember back when, because I didn't go to UB my whole four years. Like I'm a transfer student from Buff State. And um, when I was in Buff State, there was a lot of my big friend group, like uh, I was the outlier, right? I was just the white kid that was from, you know, a rich suburbs and everyone else is from the Bronx or the city or Harlem. And um, there's a lot of times where they're talking about stuff and I just, you know, I had no, nothing to relate, like nothing. Like, yeah, I, n I never had anything like that, you know. I just was in my house all the time. But um, it's more or less like they don't, like I can't, and I don't like I say what I can say, but like what I can say doesn't re correlate or does not re relate to anything they're saying. So it's more or less my voice gets ignored in that situation. Um, but that just comes back to, you know, just not me having that experience, and that just comes to just normal relations. So I don't, I never take it personally. I just kind of sit back and listen. Um, but like, there's been other times where people are like, you know, they talk about how like, oh, I'm white and how this and this happens. I'm like, that's not how, that's not how I see it. That's not how I interact. Like, I had to work for stuff, but um, it just, it just comes up with the people like. Sometimes I speak up, sometimes I don't want to have the argument because I don't want people to get the wrong message of me. But I, you know, I do sometimes believe that, you know, I more or less get ignored some days. But yeah, I work through it. Uh, I don't really, I don't think that's happened to me. Um, I'm not really one to just dip out when a conversation doesn't take a turn that I like because, you know, that would be rude. I mean, I understand why people, <laughs> but like I just get a little anxious, so I don't tend to do that in any given topic. So I was with I was with people I knew just like eating food and stuff, like just a typical like not a typical day, but we were like it was over the summer, you know. I heard someone that was in that group with me like say something racist, and I mean this person is some like I was it just. Like the social risks, which is just so lame to say. It's so lame that I'm saying that. Like I felt, I just felt this nervousness. Like, like somehow I would be attacked, which again, that I would be attacked, which I again I feel is lame for me to even say that I didn't decide to stand out and stand up and speak out. For what, for what actually is the right thing to do, I didn't say anything. And that taught me something. That struck something in me. That made me think about how all the ways that I can stand up, that I can just speak, that I can just connect with people without the fear of judgment, without the fear of being attacked, for what I say, without all these fears, and I can just do what's right and not have all these things tied to me, weighing me down. Because, I mean, again, like, it's a short life to live, kind of. And, I mean, the least we can each do is just stand up for one another. Um, there were some times where I did. Um, and it really is like the point of just an experience and not having the full knowledge. And my basis is that, you know, I have many outlets where my voice can be heard. The example, this is a very this is a good one, that my voice will be heard. And so I, sometimes I like to step back and let other people who don't usually get their voice out, because people are usually, like with this Dan, he's usually the loudest in the room. But there's some people that, you know, I encourage to go up there and talk and, you know, say about um, black history or, or any other type of cultures that I don't really know fully and I don't really know if I can understand fully. Um, there's those type of topics where you know, I take a step back and I let other people talk and let other people take the charge because um, I don't want to take away from someone else's voice because I know my voice will get out there some type of way, but I do know that sometimes other people's voices will never get out there. So I like to give people those chances to 
to speak out. And, um, and it's not like I don't support or I don't want to be a part of it. I just, I, I'd be a part of it in my own way, in my own little area. And um, I learn and I just, you know, I, I go from there and I do my actions based upon that. Yeah, I think white privilege exists. It's like, you know, two people running track. One person has a clear path and the other person has hurdles. So it's just like, you know, privilege is not having barriers set to you in contrast to people of color who often do have those barriers put in place to hinder anything, I guess. White privilege is, it's definitely real. I, to define it, oh boy, it can be quite complicated, but it's deeply rooted. It's in the structures that kind of uphold our society today. It is something that puts other people at a disadvantage and puts other people in power, whether they realize it or not. Yes, but I have two parts to this. So yes, I do think white privilege exists in a manner, but I also believe it adds on to it. Uh, there's a wealth privilege as well. Um, where I'm from, back in Rochester and Pittsburgh, it's a heavily, heavily predominantly white, very rich area. And so you get this very special type of person where it's like they're like, you know, Richard, Pittsburgh has his own problems with the racial issues and all that. So I see it firsthand, a lot of that stuff that happens. Um, is there white privilege? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've experienced it. I once was in a car with um, me and four of my African-American friends from, from Buff State. And, you know, one of them had a vape and they're using it. And we were in stop and go traffic on the 290 and all of a sudden I look back and I see a state trooper right, side, right next to us. And he looks at me and I look at him, he points at me and points to the side of the road and turns his lights on. So he pulled us over and he got out and he, he was so confident walking to a car and he, I rolled down my window and he was like, he got down like on the window like this really thing. And then he was like, all right boys, where's the, where's the weed? I know you guys have it. And we're like, oh, we're like, officer, there's nothing. Like, do you smell anything? Like, it smells like, like, like berries. Like, what do you want? Like, um, and at that moment, my four friends started going, you know, just going off, like, you know, rowdy. And I'm, I'm like, oh, this is gonna, it's gonna be a fun situation. But um, he ends up pulling me out of the car and I hear my friends still going, you know, yell at him, all these things and like, um, that's an example, like, I wonder, like, what if I was in the driver's seat, you know, like, what if, would have happened um, if it wasn't me with my, you know, my picture in my car and all that stuff, and um, that really shows that, you know, there may be, like, I, you definitely see, it, like I said, officer situations, and um, a lot of times in jobs, right now I'm a senior, I'm looking for jobs, and, you know, that's really a big hot topic when I go into companies, and, you know, they have these quotas they want to hit for um, diversity. And sometimes I think, you know, why not me? You know, like, why am I being left out? But that's something like, that's another thing where I just, like, don't know that side of it. So I, I don't have that experience. A lot of times I just step back. But um, the what I was saying earlier about wealth um, privilege is that um, you see a lot of, like, I saw it firsthand, a lot of wealthy people get off on things easily other than poor people. Um, you see that most definitely in court cases, and you know that's something that a lot of people I think they do realize, but they don't speak enough. Like it doesn't matter a race; it also matters of how much money is in your bank account and how you can fight back, and the resources you have at your, at your ability. Because you know, if you're a really wealthy person, you can get a really good lawyer, and you can get out of really big cases. As you can see, time and time, people just get out because they had so much money. Well, all the people who don't are not as fortunate. You know, they get the short end of the stick, and like they get you know a really bad punishment, and all that from the court, and. And, you know, I do think it's getting better in this world. I think I, I, we do see these, these isolated incidences where, yes, it's still, there are some problems that we have to make true. But I do think, you know, with this newer generation and you know, people like me and people around us, like there is, there is change coming and um, we just got to, you know, keep our ground and fight back and just hopefully, like, I think it's coming soon. I think it's coming faster than people realize with this whole... Mu um, with Gen Z, like, like my, cause my age is not Gen Z, like we're finally entering the workforce, we're finally getting out of college and um, putting that stamp on the world. So 
You know, my privilege may exist today, but I don't think it will exist 20 years from now.